All right, Alex Meaty, JoeBlow.com. Nice to meet both of you. Nice to meet you. So uh, I've been apologizing to everybody over the course of these uh, interviews today, and I need to apologize to both of you that I did not watch this show for the first few seasons just because there's so much TV to watch. I've got so much that I've got to watch. I just was on the list, and I never watched it. But it's kind of your fault, Stephen. It's a little bit your fault that I didn't watch it. Oh, no. What yeah. did he do? <laughs> well, he was on this show that I loved that lasted for two Aww. seasons and I was so invested in it and then it got canceled and I never got to see what happened. So I was not going to get burned again by a show that you were in that I didn't get to finish. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, but I'm glad that I did get into the show. I, I started around season four, went back and binged the first few seasons. And it was, it's such a great show. It, it transcends genre. It's not just a sci-fi show. And both of you are the are select characters that have been on this entire journey from beginning to end. And where the series ends up at the end of season six, there it's not finite. It doesn't close the door on future adventure. So right off the bat, if there were to be a season seven in one capacity or another, would both of you be up for it? Yes, I, I just don't. I don't want to get my hopes up. I mean, like, you know, I, I, I want to say this first is that, you know, it is incredibly rare to be able to have a complete story of a beginning, middle and end. Yeah. That, you know, I'm grateful that we got here by itself. You know, I, there is there is a very large gap between book six and seven. Um, and it's kind of its own story. So, you know, the aim originally was always to get to six. So like, you know, what we set out to do, we accomplished. And I think, you know, it is exceedingly rare and an incredible privilege to be able to do it on your own creative terms for six years. Um, yeah. It's just, uh, you know, I'm incredibly grateful for that. So, I mean, you know, if something else comes down, you know, wonderful, but it's not um, that that doesn't take away whether that happens or not from what we've made, because what we've made is something I think um, that we have all invested in 100 percent since the first episode. And uh, it's work I'm I'm deeply, deeply, deeply proud of. Mm. Yeah. And, oh, go ahead. No, go. On. I was just going to say, Dominic, your character is, I mean, there, it kind of flips things when Marco comes into the equation in uh, season four and into season five. There is a moment, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody who hasn't read the books or seen the show, but there's a moment in the final episode that is just so emotionally, <laughs> it's a gut punch and you play it so amazingly well. How, do you, how did you find that, that intensity for that scene? Um, you know, I... It's credit to the writers. She's always been such a layered, full character. And I've always had so much to work with. And I think that, you know, season five alone, <laughs> if I'd have just done that one going into season six, all of what happened stayed with me into taking this character into season six. It could not, you know, it's, it's the most recent kind of trauma of her story. And so having to make the kind of decisions that she does throughout this season and then the one that you're talking about was so loaded on so many levels, you know? So I uh, extra things came out that weren't on the page that even surprised me and I think surprised Breck and everyone else that was um, listening to me. Um, but it was genuinely how I felt about the position that she was put in. And I just think it's one of the most difficult things I've encountered as an actress to put on screen in terms of the, um, the ethics of it, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And how, you, how do you make that choice? So, yeah, I, I mean, it was delicious to play as an actor, but, um, yeah, wild, like as a as a mother as Naomi 
and for for both of you, your characters get to interact with so many of this this ensemble across every location. More than some of the characters, you get to have those scenes. Was there anybody over the course of these seasons that either one of you did not get a chance to act opposite in person that you wish you had had that opportunity? Um, I wish I. I wish I would have been able to act more with Kara. Um, I had lots of that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really, I did we had it a little bit, but, um, you know, uh, she's such a, such a wonderful actor. Um, I, I would have, I would have enjoyed that. Um, I love Anna Hopkins in this show. She plays Monica. Yeah. Is it Monica? Yeah. Yeah. Monica. Um, and I just, especially in season six, six, I think her arc is gorgeous. So I think I would have liked to have more scenes with her, actually, um, because I've really enjoyed, I've always enjoyed watching her. So probably Anna, yeah. Because yeah. I've, I've pretty much had scenes with everyone. Like, Yeah. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of intensity. There's a lot of seriousness on the show. And uh I mentioned on screen interacting because I know that filming during the pandemic and with everything that was going on, you were isolated from one another during various portions of it. But I was told in another interview that you do have a fun, naughty group text that's going on. Are you both involved in that? Naturally. <laughs> Can you some people have denied like, it. What? We're like, wait, what text? Are you, huh? like, some people it... did deny it. Some people deny that it existed. So it's nice <laughs> I mean... to know that. <laughs> we 100% have a group text like yeah. yes because we have to communicate about really important things like rehearsals and stuff <laughs> it's not that so, naughty yeah oh um the other big question that i have and both of you kind of fall on either side of of this divide there is uh there's very intense facial hair this season and everybody's got some pretty amazing tattoos going on. Um, who would you vote has the best tattoos? And who would you say has the best facial hair in season six? Ooh. Season six. Best. Tattoos is tough. That's a, there's good tattoos almost everywhere. I really like Walker's tattoos mm, in yeah. season six. Mm -hmm. Um, I really enjoy that character as well. So I would say he's got my favorite tattoos in season six and facials has. I feel like Amos always wins that one. I agree. There's a fullness of the beard there. Yeah, it's yeah. very lumberjacky. Yeah. And I'm always quite impressed by it. There, there's all kinds of beard envy going on. With, the, with, I mean, that, with that beautiful beard. Yeah. Yours is pretty intense this season. I mean, you've got, yeah, you've got a you pretty hard car one. I, uh, I, I, want, I wanted Holden to just look ragged. Like, he was like, <laughs> I, I, dro I dropped a bunch of weight. Like, I want him to look really gaunt and just tired and just really, like, at the end of his rope. And um, that was part of it. Um, so just trying to communicate as much of his stress through his physicality as I possibly could. Um, but tattoo wise, I mean, walkers are amazing. Um, I'd have to, yeah, I agree. Yeah. What a great character though. I know. Yeah, really so good. Awesome. Yeah. This is also a show that I think people, there's people out there that are going to judge a show based on the genre and they're going to say, ah, I don't watch science fiction. That's not for me or whatever it might be. What would you say that, how would you describe what they're missing with this show? for those people that may not be giving it a chance just because they see that it's set in outer space? I think it's the least interesting part about it. And not to take away from that, because I think um, the kind of way that we depict space and space travel and the future is really realistic and gritty and awesome in comparison to other sci-fi shows that I've seen. But at the core of this show is the humans and the depiction of messy, flawed, grey human beings who are constantly at the consequences of the choices and the um, actions that they've taken. And I think that's why people so so many people connect with the show, because it's so true to who we are in life. Um, and I also think that's what makes has made The Expanse so successful 
is being honest to that, being true to that, that kind of, uh, you know, the, the, the messiness of humanity and it's gorgeous um, and you never know which side you're on and it's never black and white. And um, I think that's, that's what everyone's missing. And I think they should all wash it. I think, um, I think we have always been blessed with the most superb writing that tackles through allegory the most important issues that we deal with as human beings, you know, whether it be politics or race, identity, um, the, the personal journeys of trauma, um, you know, it's it's something that's told with immense respect and empathy and sensitivity. And I think no matter who watches it, they can find something in there that speaks to them. And I think it, that's that's why our fan base is so diverse and and um every, all different kinds of people connect with the expanse um you know people who've never watched science fiction before it's not really a, about the genre it's it's about people, people. <laughs> it's about people um and and you know the the genre does afford you the the ability to use that allegory in a very disarming way that can that can cut through mm. people's biases um, and start conversations mm. where they maybe wouldn't have been had otherwise. So um, I'd say that is that don't don't focus on the space and just focus on the people. And it is such a unique portrayal of of space that it's not like any other show. It's not treated like a Star Trek or a Battlestar Galactic. It is its own thing. But those stories that you're talking about, that human component that everybody can ground themselves in it, it does, especially this season, feel so much more relatable to what's going on in the world. Yeah. Was that something that was informed as you started making this season, that things that were going on, current events, maybe not directly in the script, but did that in any way influence how you played these, these episodes? I think that's a hard question to answer because, you know, I always every time we release a season it's super timely it's super like indicative of what is going on in the world around and when I asked Ty and Daniel they're like humans do the same things over and over again and that's why this always works and so I don't know like I am sure that our individual experiences as men and women and people of color and they, they leak in. I know for sure that has happened with Naomi and playing a belter. It's like that ex type of existence is not alien to me. And so I think what it done mostly for me is just be so satisfied with the ending. Like it is so rare that that shift of power happens in the way that it does on this, sh on this show to conclude it. And um, to see that happen, it's like... For me, it's the perfect way to end this saga. And so I think definitely in that respect, it, it left me feeling very happy <laughs> and hopeful, actually. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, just to just touch on what she was saying, I, Daniel and Ty knew the end of this story before they start, first started writing the first book. And, you know, tackling, I mean, it, it talks about so many different things, but you know, the, the themes of tribalism that are, are so prevalent in the world today uh, and have been prevalent in, you know, different times in history, most of history. Um, you know, it, it's, it's timely and relevant and all of that. But I think, you know, it's, it's impossible not to be influenced by your own circumstances in the world and to see what it does to, to you know, people you know and you know and places are in your home and um and you you know there's there's um there's real life uh personal experiences that uh i think inform decisions whether you choose them to or not um so uh yeah i think in some way you know i wasn't consciously doing it but i i'm sure i'm sure yeah. the influence is in there How somewhere yeah 
Well, it's a phenomenal season. I, I really loved it. It's wonderful to see the story reach the end point. I really appreciate your time. And Dominique, if you haven't seen it yet, go watch season one and two of Magic City and you'll understand why oh, I was so disappointed. It. I knew exactly it's, what you were talking about. It's so, it's, I, it's one of the Excellent biggest show. things that I miss. It's so good. Oh, but, thanks, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for the time. Thank All you. All right. Take care.